obviously wasn't your unit's best performance. It just come out of nowhere for you? Uh, no, I mean, I think gave up some critical plays at critical situations. That's that's the thing I took from it more, more than anything. A um, couple third downs there, we didn't make plays. We're a perfect world. We make those plays. We're off the field. Give us a shot. thought we battled in the run game. I know there were a few, two or three that – Went for 10 plus, but I thought we battled overall. Um, under four, four per carry, pretty good. Winning football in terms of, of stopping the run. If you're under four, usually. Um, just gotta eliminate the explosives on that end. That's the other thing that just keeps showing up, the explosive runs, making sure we keep those down. But I think the, the biggest thing that came away from that game is just when the time comes, we gotta, critical situations, we gotta be able to execute and make the plays. and and not let them make the plays and not really don't give it to them, right? Like we gotta make sure we don't give it to them and, and are in the right spots and execute at a high level. Why do you think uh, interceptions have been so few and far between and how do you get more of them? One more time? One interception, and like, how, why do you think that's the case and how do you get more of them? Yeah, I, th I think we gotta do a good job. It starts with making sure we stop the run. We gotta get them in some passing situations. Um, get in some favorable situations for us where we can rush, where we can cover. Play with vision, affect the quarterback. Um, continue to, to make the plays that are there. Hopefully, get some balls tipped in the air that we can catch. Um, it's got to create the, those opportunities for ourselves, and, and when they present themselves, we got to be able to make them. Are they presenting themselves? Like, do you feel like you had chances for interception? Uh, I don't think. Not enough. Not enough. I think we need more. And again, it's something we got to continue to work at, and we got to find ways. It strikes me as a surprise shame because like people always say pass rush and second year go hand in hand. You lead the league in sacks. Yep. So that should be rushing quarterbacks and you're last in interceptions. So yeah. very odd. Yeah, and I would say uh I mean a big emphasis for me is we're back there on, on the quarterback and, and we don't get the ball off them. Right? Like quarterbacks are the number one fumblers in the NFL. So there's gotta be an emphasis if if we're able to get back there and we're able to get to them, let's let's try to attack the football. Like strip sack it's a sack, just the same. So um, I would say that's that's a major point of emphasis. And I, I mean, I'd agree with you. You would think if you're able to affect, but again, those quarterbacks, if you're getting the sack numbers, they're not putting it up in the air either, right? So um, hopefully we can take advantage of those times where we're able to get some pressure, get them off the spot, make them uncomfortable back there. If, if there are opportunities that aren't great throws, we can take advantage of them. How can you get the pass rush back to where it was after this past weekend? Yeah, just keep working. I mean, uh, I mean, teams, obviously, they, they know what we know and they know what you know. I mean, we've had some success with those guys. Those guys have been able to win some one on one. So they're keeping some guys in. They're chipping on the edges. They're sliding where they need to slide. So we got to continue to counter that. And again, goes back to a little bit of my point earlier. Like, we got to make sure we do a good job on early downs and stopping the run, putting them in some pass situations where we can go to where it's not always run, play, action, pass. How do you counter chips? Or what is the answer to that? Because it seems like anytime you guys don't have a lot of sacks, you ask, you know, Burns or whatever, they say they chip me all game. So how do you? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. It is. I think I think their awareness of, of where they are, how they attack those guys, right? Like, you in essence got to be two guys. You got to have a plan for the first guy, then you got to have a plan for the second guy. You, can't just go in there and, and say they chipped me and I'm done, right? Like, we got to keep working at it. Um, continue to coordinate some things between the edge, the inside, what we're able to do there to try to change the picture on them in regard to that. Um, and and again, if, if they got three guys out and around, hopefully we got some bodies, we got some vision, we can do some things and, and find ways to get off the field in those situations. What's missing up front in the running game? In the run um. I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's anything, one thing in particular. I really don't. I, I think the X play runs are what's been showing up, and it's been across the board. It's been missed tackles here or there. Um, it's been potentially misfitting some things at times, not get, being in the right spot. Um, I mean, you look and, and you go through all the all the runs, and you look back at them, and there's some there's some really good clips in there, and you're you just like, how can we get to the point where those other twenty 25 runs look like the five that were given up the 10 plus, right? So um, just finding ways to do that. And I think a big part of that too is is making sure if, if we, they do find a crease or it does break some form or fashion, like let's make sure it's 10 to 15 and 
we've had a few of those 50, 40 yarders too that play into that too. Um, but just continue to focus on it, continue to make sure guys are doing their job, technique and fundamentals across the board, eyes come into play. Um, I mean, I think there's a myriad of reasons. You had, you had Watts in that sub package, uh, rush package with Dex and, and the two edge guys a little bit. He's only been here a short time. Yeah. What has he shown you? What about his game were you trying to yeah. you know, mix in there? I, I thought he did a really good job in there. Um, I think he, he won a few and he had some opportunities and it's what he's shown out here at practice. I mean, that's, that's what we tell these guys. You, you earn your opportunities. Nothing's going to be handed to you. Um, again, it's week to it's a week to week league across the board. So you got to prove it every week. Guys come out here and practice. They do something. We see something. Like we're going to give them an opportunity to go see if they can do it on Sunday. Um, just keeping the competition healthy, continuing to kind of build on that, and make sure these guys are competing day in and day out. And hopefully, they make the most of their opportunities come Sunday, which I thought he did for the most part. How do you McLeod filled a lot of roles for you guys inside slot and can play safety. Versatile started five games. How do you replace him? Yeah, I mean, I, we got guys that again appreciate Nick, appreciate how he carried himself, appreciate that role that he had here. Thought he he was a the pro, uh, ultimate pro in that regard. Um, really appreciative of him and what he was to our unit, to this team, and his time here. Um, but we got guys like it's, it's the NFL. I mean, it happens happens everywhere. So um, looking forward to some of these other guys. They're going to have some opportunities, and hopefully they can make the most of it. Who is the next guy? But Nickel, you know, he was the guy who was stepping and drew out the other day. Like, who is that next guy there? Yeah, we got a few. I mean, between obviously Flats played there, between Strowman, between Zay. Like, we got some pieces there that that we feel comfortable with that we can we can mix in there if we need to. How do you get Deontay Brooks back to playing the level that you guys want him to be at? I think day in and day out, staying on him, coaching him hard, um, finding wins, small victories out on the practice field, continuing to gain confidence, continue to make plays on the football and practice. I think that carries over to the game. I thought he did some good things Sunday. Obviously, there's a, a few plays he, he probably wants back. We probably won't want back just the same. Um, but I thought he did some good things. Showed up in the run game. I think that's a step that he's he's continuing to take for us. Um, been an emphasis there as well. So I think just the day in and day out, the grind of an NFL season at practice. Like we gotta we gotta be able to do it in practice. All eleven of us. Like we gotta be able to do it in practice if we expect to do it on Sunday. With with Tay, you mentioned confidence. Did, did you sense? that he maybe had lost a little bit? No, I, no sense no sense of that. I think it's more just let's envision ourselves. Let's go out here and, and make these plays and practice, and then the game is going to happen second nature. Does that make sense? How much, how, much different, how much different or more confident do you see Bryce Young after he came back and was put back in the lineup, or how, or what do you see di different? If yeah, he, he made they made some plays down the field. He had a nice little back shoulder throw and a little wheel route, like got the got the ball in guys' hands, and they made some plays. Tight end, another tight end hurdling down the sideline. Seems like we see one every week. Um, but I thought it was decisive. Found ways to get the ball of his hands, get them to their playmakers. They got they got really good catch and run guys. Like if, if they're able to get the ball in their hands in space. They're big, they're strong and fast, they're tough to bring down. Um, so utilizing that, I think their run game, they're doing a really good job running the football, especially on early downs. Um, so just making sure they're gonna have compliments off of that to help him, to help everybody, to help the offense. So um, we gotta make sure we do a good job on early downs and then hopefully we can make them uncomfortable and, and go from there. Is tackling in your mind right now, is it a matter of Fundamentals? Is it is it will and focus? Um, and how are you working yeah. on that kind of mid season? Yeah, I do. I, I think some the space ones are hard, and and uh, I think our guys' understanding of like there's no bad tackle when you're in space, right? Get them on the ground. I think the understanding like it's going to be times you might it might not look good, and you might end up on your back. Like that's the nature of the beast. Like it's tough to get those kill shots when when there's space, right? So I think it's twofold: continuing to constrict space. Right, so we're not having some of those creases where where it gives the running back some two way goes, um, and at the same time, when we do find ourselves in those positions, let's make sure we stay on our feet. We're not too wide with our base. We're not hopping. 
We're not stepping under ourselves. We're stepping to contact. We're wrapping up like eyes, angles. I mean, there's a there's a million things fundamentally that go into making a tackle um, that I think we got to continue to see. And again, like we pointed out every day in practice, like those are the little things in practice. Like you can't you can't disregard, and and we got to make sure that we're focused on them, players and coaches throughout the week.